This content is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. Now, I know I'm always late to this, but in today's video, I wanted to let you know that I have updated my packs to support the latest Switch firmware, which is right now 20.2.0. We're going to be using the latest atmosphere which is right now 1.9.2 and hecate as well which is at 6.3.1 now those of you that like to update your files manually i'll have links in the description to the two separate zip files that you would need to update your um, sd card or update your cfw that's if you want to do it manually those of you that have seen my videos where i have my modified version of the aio updater app that has been updated as well. It also has the switch firmware 20.2.0 in the firmware's directory, which we're going to be seeing later on. But just wanted to uh, let you know, for those of you that uh, don't have it, I'll have a link in the description as well to my modified version of the switch updater app. Now, just to keep things a little bit more quickly in this video, it's only going to be on the AIO switch updater app. If you have any questions on doing this manually, you can uh, leave a comment down below and I can help you out as best as I can. Um, before we get started, the AIO Switch Updater app, I don't know why, but if you are on a lower uh, firmware, let's say at least the lowest 17.00, it probably won't work for you. It should work for you. But the lowest I've seen is 16.1.0, which it doesn't work at all, at all. I don't know why. But if you're at 17.00 and up, I believe it works. I know I'm being confusing, but I just wanted to get that out there just in case you have any issues. And if you do have issues and your SD card or your switch doesn't work anymore, you always have the option to install it manually uh, just in case. So if you have any issues, errors, you can leave a comment down below and I will uh, try and help you out as best as I can. Okay, so before we get started, for those of you that already have my modified version of the AIO Switch Updater app, you do not need to follow this part of the video. This is for those that do not have it and we're gonna add it to the SD card. So if you have it, you're good to go. And if you already know how to use it, you can go and update your um, packs with the app already. But if you wanna follow along with me, we can go ahead and continue. You can now open up the SD card that we're using on the Switch that has CFW. And it doesn't matter how you open up your SD card, as long as you're able to transfer your files successfully, I highly recommend using the Hecate SD card tools because you don't have to take out the SD card you can access the SD card from the switch and do all your updates from there. So it's very convenient. And that's what I'm doing right now in this video. So with the SD card open, I'm going to download this one zip file for today. So if you look in the description down below, there's going to be several links and one of them should say, click here to download the AIO, the other side AIO switch of data.zip. Once you click on that link, it should take you to my GitHub release page and you just go down to the assets, click on that link and start the download process. I used to show that process, but my videos get taken down when I do those kind of things. So if you're able to download this zip file, you can move it to desktop and we can move on to the next thing. Now that we have this uh, one zip file, we're gonna want to right click. And I always use 7-Zip on all my videos. I never have any issues with it. So if you wanna follow along with me with 7-Zip, I'll have a download link to that as well in the description. But with 7-Zip, I'm gonna open the archive. And here we're gonna have one switch folder and we're gonna have the root of the SD card. And that means the beginning of the SD card without any um, folders. And since we have a switch folder here, we're gonna to want to highlight this one switch folder and we're gonna extract it to the root of the SD card. So anywhere in the empty space in the beginning of your SD card. So it says I have the file uh, in the destination. That's okay, because I already have it on my SD card. So it might not say that for you, but that's pretty much it. Now all we need to do is go ahead and try it out on the switch. So eject out of the SD card and go back onto the switch. Oh, hate when it does that. And we'll go from there. And uh, like I said in the beginning, those of you that want to manually download these files, I'll have the link in the description as well. But let's go ahead and go onto the switch. Okay, so back on the switch, before we do anything else, I would like to show you all that I am on a lower switch firmware. So let's go down the system and you should see, or you should have seen that I'm on the switch firmware 20.1.5 with atmosphere 1.9.1. 1. 
I like to do these references every time I make these videos because once we do all the updates together, I like to come back and show you all that we should be updated to the desired firmwares that we want, which is right now 20.2.0 and Atmosphere 1.9.2. So now that that got ruined, the next thing that we should do is make sure we have an established internet connection because the app will not work if you don't have internet already connected. So I'm already connected to my Wi-Fi internet. And the last thing that I highly recommend is using the HP menu without app mode. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you enter album and you enter HP menu, you will have this app mode words in the top right hand corner. And this means you're not using the full power of the switch when you're in HP menu. So I don't recommend using the apps here. But of course, if you have if you have absolutely no choice at all, you can still use Apple mode. I just highly recommend not using it. So try your best to not use Apple mode if you don't have to. Now, you do have two options to to get into HP menu without Apple mode. And one of them being a folder like I have here on my uh, custom version for my channel. And if you're interested in this, I can leave a, a leave a comment down below and I can try and help you out with that. The other way that you can get into HP menu without Apple mode is using a title override. And that means if you go to any one of your installed titles on your switch and you hold the right shoulder button of your Joy-Con, hold it down and enter your uh, titles, make sure you don't accidentally update, keep holding the right shoulder button and you should enter HP menu without Apple mode. So you have those two options. I'm going to go ahead and use the folder because it represents the channel. So go into HP menu without Apple mode. And once you have internet connection, we can navigate to the app. And this is my modified version of the AIO switch up data app. You know that it's modified because in the icon, it shows the other side. Now I didn't change anything of the way the AIO switch up data app functions. All I did was just change the way it looks for uh, the resources. So the original one looks for atmosphere uh, resources, and this one looks for my version of my packs on GitHub. That's all I changed. So if you have internet connection, go ahead and enter the app. Oh, also, you could use both of the apps, and I'm only telling you all this because I do not update my app. So a lot of people always ask me on the bottom left corner, it says a new up app update available you cannot update this app this is a modified version it's not the original so if there's any updates that are needed and it gets broken in the future i will do an update video of you know the the app that i have remodified for it for what i need it for so you can use both original version and mine just in case if you want to uh, if you want to use it but if using mine internet connection is good and you go to update atmosphere if everything goes well you should see this uh pack which is the other side ams 1.9.2 and depending on well what the future holds it will always be changing update bootloaders does the same thing the other side hecate and download firmwares and these are my firmwares that i personally dumped up to this option here 20.2.0 and I uh, dump them for my own switch and never have any issues. Uh, so we should be good there. Uh, I don't know if anything else works here, but just all I use it for is to update my packs. So that's all you should use it for as well. So first thing we're going to do is update the CFW, go to update atmosphere and enter it. Go ahead and click on continue, let it download. Now, for some reason, this first option here always messes up a lot of people. And I don't know why. Honestly, I don't know why. This message here, the first one you get is, do you want to override existing INI config files? I always click on no, and because it works for me. Sometimes clicking yes works for me. And I don't know why for several, several other people, these options work for some and don't work for others and vice versa. So just letting you know that if you click on one of these options, uh, you can, it, it'll probably crash on you, maybe. So if it does crash on you, you can just go right back into it and try the other option. But it doesn't really matter of these existing INI files because 
uh, my packs come with uh, updated uh, configuration files for my packs. So I would always recommend that you click on no because when it extracts my pack, you'll have uh, different I and I files. So you don't want nothing conflicting. But of course, if it crashes, let's leave it crashes. Okay, it went on to the next thing. So if everything goes well, you should get the next message, which says, would you like to delete all custom sys module startup flags? This will turn off all your sys modules and prevent crashes. This is really important because those of you that have previous versions of sys modules, like let's say like uh, mission control, it would not work for you anymore if there's an updated firmware. And you're always gonna wanna click on yes on here. I'll click on yes. It starts extracting the CFW pack of the other side. And then here it asks you if you want to download Hecate. Of course, you're going to want to click on yes. And it's also 6.3.1, which is the latest. It does the same thing, download, and it should ask for another question. This one says, do you want to overwrite existing INET config files? And you're going to want to click on no as well, uh, because my pack already updates it when it gets extracted. So click on that. Of course, if you get any type of crashing, you could uh, just go right back in and choose the other option. But here we go. If everything goes well, it should say the switch will now reboot into a special payload in order to finalize the install. So let's go ahead and click on that. And because my packs, I already automatically update them to uh, go back into Hecate. So this is for both OG switches, which I'm using right now, and V2 and Mariko devices as well. I update all my packs to work with all of them, even OLED and stuff like that. So after you do the updates, you'll be back into Hecate. Here in Hecate, I know it's blurry, but just to show you all, you're gonna wanna just go, in, if you have EMU MNC, you can go and enable it because it's probably gonna be disabled, but go into launch and you have all these options here. I have updated my packs to use the Package 3 instead of the FSSO, which does the same thing, but you have these options. First option is for OFW. You have no uh, CFW active in this one, and people usually go online with this option. I, I don't recommend doing that, but that'd be up to you. The second option is a CFW using Fusey bin. The third option is using the EMU MMC using Fusey bin. And the fourth option is using Package 3 instead of Fusey bin, and the last option is using package three on MMC. And I use all of these options here because same thing, just like the app, for some reason it works with others and some options don't work and vice versa. So you can go ahead and try the Atmosphere Assistant with Fusey bin, which is the first two. And if those don't work, then you can try the other options after. So this is the version I used all the time, never have any issues. And let's get back on the Switch. So back on the Switch, if everything goes well, you should be able to boot back into your Switch with no problems. But we can go ahead and check to see if we are updated by going back into System Settings, going down to System. And here we now see that I'm on the version 20.1.5, now updated to Atmosphere 1.9.2 with an S. And the reason why I have an S is because I'm using my CFW on SysNand. If you have an E, that's because you're using yours on MMC. And the reason why you're able to see this uh, current version now, because with all my packs, I always add a host file that blocks Nintendo and you're not allowed to uh, use Nintendo services anymore and accidentally update. So if you do ever want to go back to using a Nintendo services, you can go and uh, remove that host file in Atmosphere. So I'm glad you can see it now, 20.1.5. Now let's go ahead and address the download for 20.2.0. So now we need to go back into the app. Make sure you have internet connection. Locate the modified version AO switch updater. Now we can go to download firmwares and click on 20.2.0. Uh, depending on your internet speeds, it's going to take some time. Okay, reaching the end. Now it's going to do the extracting. Okay, once it's done, 
you should see the option that says, do you want to launch Daybreak to install the download sys update? Always click no, because for some reason, oh, it always crashes when you do that. Go ahead and click on no. And then now we can go back into the HP menu without after mode, if it's possible, then go into Daybreak. Now here on Daybreak, we can go ahead and click on install. We're gonna to wanna to look for the folder that has the firmware. So it should say firmware. And here we go, we have 20.2.0. Just go ahead and click on it and let it uh, validate the update. All right, so all my dumps will have the XFAT that is supported. So you don't have to worry about that as well. So once it's valid, we can go ahead and click on continue. You always wanna, you always want to preserve the settings. So the purple is the option, preserve settings. You always want to click on install FAT32 plus XFAT as well. And it's ready to begin installations. Go ahead and click on continue. After that, we're gonna have one more reboot. It's gonna go back into Hecate. And then you can just go back into your switch. All right, so if everything works out again, and you're able to boot back into your switch with no issues, you should be able to go back into system settings and check to see if we are now fully updated to our desired firmwares. And you can see under my current version, it is 20.2.0 and atmosphere 1.9.2. So everything worked out for me and I hope everything works out for you as well. But um, of course, if it doesn't, you can leave a comment down below and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. But other than that, also let me know if it does work for you. Uh, I've uh, seen a lot of uh, people in the community uh, actually use the app, and I appreciate those that uh, use the app and uh, trust my videos. So thank you for watching and the support that people give to the channel, people that have donated. I really appreciate everything uh, that uh, y'all do in support of this channel. So thank you very much. and. As always, I'll see you on the next one.